भगवत गीता एट पॉइंट ट्वेंटी सेवन नई श्रुति पार्थ जानन योगी मुहियत कश्चन अस्मात सर्वेशु कालेशु योग युक्तो भव अर्जुन हियर कृष्णा इज गिविंग कॉल फॉर एक्शन इन द प्रीवियस वर्सेस स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम 23 onwards till 28 those six verses he has given a quick recap of the vedic paths of devyan and pitrayan wherein timing is critical for deter- in determining a destiny post mortem destiny where we'll go after death now arjuna may think may worry that he is fighting in a war he is a warrior and although he is a top notch warrior a peerless warrior still it is victory is never certain in any war and a warrior can become a martyr within moments and of course the warrior is a martyr for those who survive to to celebrate his martyrdom for the warrior if death comes he can in one moment at one moment we can be a illustrious famed hero on a chariot and the next moment he can be a corpse such is the unpredictability and death proneness of everyone's life but all the more so of the lives of warriors because their very profession at one level requires them to fight in a to fight and be in near death situations constantly so arjuna on hearing this description of how the timing is so important and all the more so because krishna has said that Brahm, brahma vidojana that those who depart in uttarayana will attain perfection now the kurukshetra war is being fought in dakshinayan and therefore it is almost impossible firstly for a warrior uh, to be conscious of the timing of one's death you can't tell the enemy oh this is not the right time for me to die so please don't shoot me now the enemy is going to be ruthless so because of all these factors arjuna may be ha- may have anxiety about his fate krishna then that refer directly to arjuna here but he says what to speak of a warrior like arjuna even for a yogi one does not be bewildered now what to speak of a warrior like arjuna means that arjuna is actually fighting war as a yoga when he is doing it in the mode of service to to his um, to krishna so krishna is telling here naite shruti parth janan naite shruti shruti uh, you know arjuna these two the yogi muhyati kashchana janan the yogi is no both this path but still na muhyati kashchana they are never bewildered what does it mean these timings are important in determining one's post mortem destination but they are not all important there is some factor that is actually far more important some other factor that factor of course is the remembrance of krishna antakale chamameva smaranmukta kalevaram 
यह प्रयाति समाव याति नास्ति अत्र संशय so those who remember krishna at the time of death they attain perfection irrespective of whatever else may be going on in their lives and whatever the circumstances may be there whatever be the timing that doesn't matter for them all that matters is that they remember Uh, they remember krishna so krishna is telling over here tasmat sarveshu kaleshu now this one fourth of a verse is one line in the english translation in the english transliteration this is krishna has talked about this earlier also in the in this very chapter tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmaryuddha cha mai arpita mano buddhir mam evaishyasya samshaya He is talking about this in eight point six. Therefore, at all times, ma manusmar yadhya. Remember me and fight. May your pita mano buddhir ma me vishyasya hamshay. If with your intelligence and mind dedicated to me, you will come to me. Of this, there is no doubt. So here, Krishna repeats the same assertion, in a sense which he has stated earlier in eight point four. So eight point four and eight point six give the same conclusion. 8.4 says if you remember if you remember Krishna at the time of death we'll attain him. So not 8.4. 8.5 says that and 8.7 says the same thing again. And if you remember Krishna throughout the life we will attain him. And this verse states using the same uh, one quarter of the verse the smart survey shukale shu. Here it says yoga yukto bhava arjuna. Therefore be engaged in the practice of yoga. Yoga yukto bhava. So we all need to. Uh, stay engaged in yoga. Then six point forty one seven Krishna has already stated that yogi naam pi sarve sham madgate na antaratmana shadhavan bhajite yo maam sme yukta tamo mata. He said that the yogis who meditate on him are the most intimately united with him. And then he is also stated in this very chapter in eight point fourteen that uh, that actually it is through the practice of bhakti alone that. Uh, the process of yoga, in the general sense of connecting with the absolute truth, becomes easy. Ananya cheta satatam yoga smriti nitya shahatasya ham sulabha parth nitya yukta se yogi na ha. She so stated that those who, without being deviated in their consciousness, stay fixed in remembering him, for him attaining him, is easy. Sulabha ha. So Krishna. Although he doesn't use the direct first person pronoun to refer to him, he doesn't talk directly about bhakti. But which yoga he wants us to practice, he has made abundantly clear in the previous verses. The smart sarveshu kaleshu yoga yukto bhava arjuna, bhava arjuna, o arjuna, be yoga yukta, become yoga yukta. So in the case of arjuna, for him his yoga is the yoga of fighting. He has to. Recognize that he can serve Krishna by doing Krishna's will, and Krishna's will requires him to fight. So, by harmonizing his will with Krishna's will through the act of fighting, Arjuna will be doing yoga. So, the smart Sarveshu Kali Shu Yoga Yukto Bhav Arjuna. Now, if this verse were referring to Ashtang Yoga, the practice of Ashtang Yoga, which Requires going out to the jungle, such as Deshya Pratishtha, as there are mass and mass manha, as was talked about in six point eleven. Then this verse would mean Krishna is also not giving any exception that after you fight the war, then you become yoga yukto. No, he is saying sarveshu kala eshu at all times be yoga yukta. Now Krishna has also told Arjuna to fight the war. So if this were yoga yukto, were referring to Ashtang yoga, then Krishna would have been giving contra- contradictory instructions. One is you go to the forest and practice Ashtang Yoga at all times, and the other is fight the war. So now, if Arjuna had received such contradictory if instructions, or if Arjuna had taken this interpretation of this verse of Yoga to refer to going to the forest, then he would have clarified, "How can I can can't do both? Tell me what what is the one thing to do?" And he has asked this question in a similar tone earlier in three point. Two specifically, three point one and two, but that Arjuna doesn't ask that question here. Indicates that 
he is i had understood that yoga means bhakti yoga and yoga yukto bhav arjuna means that he should actually become devoted uh, to the practice of bhakti yoga and devoted to to serving to serving krishna and even if that serving involves involves fighting which which as a martial activity may not seem spiritual to many people but still it is for him the most spiritual activity and the most spiritual awakening activity yeah, so krishna tells arjuna do not worry about your death just focus on about the timing of your death the time of your death just focus on being yoga yukta and that is the instruction that applies to all of us too if we stay yoga yukta then whatever happens we don't have to worry what is the time we will die we can just focus on krishna and we will attain krishna thank you